This is August 12th, 2016, Edible Acres 2. This is where my girlfriend and I live on Ellis Hollow Road, east of Ithaca. Um, also part of the whole Edible Acres research thing. A couple of videos that I've done over here, um, for those of you that have watched. But we're looking at a midsummer uh, update with the focus mainly being on this greenhouse. I made, a, I think, a couple of videos earlier in the spring when I was making this and I thought it'd be fun to share how it's working out in its very first season uh, just as a quick reminder and I'll make links to how it was made uh, this is a cattle panel based greenhouse cattle panels being easy to find for twenty two dollars a piece ish uh, there's four in this uh, structure so there's around what is that ninety dollars worth of metal arc and then the remainder is in plastic and wood. The wood is uh, scavenged local black locust offcuts, so those are nearly free. And then the plastic I bought new. So again, this whole structure, uh, it's like seven and a half feet by, uh, well you can watch the other video to remember, I want to say 14 feet, 16 feet. Uh, it's about $150 and it's been working beautifully. So let's take a look inside. I've got the water running in there right now again with all things related to this video channel you when you hear water running it is rainwater so that's collecting off of the whole roof into that cistern Doo -doo 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 -doo, coming into here I haven't watered in here in a while and it sure needs it but overall we're looking pretty good let's just give a quick tour of who's in here and how's it how it's going got a lemongrass hoping that this will stay uh, alive long enough to maybe get seed from it. I've got some beautiful holy basil, tulsi in here, some bronze fennel so I can get some really beautiful ripe seeds this fall, some Turkish rocket in part to um, expand my nursery stock but then also to be able to eat fresh greens throughout the winter. Red Russian kale, some lettuces that have bolted, those are kind of finally finishing off. And then on the north side, uh, some way hot weather crops, so it's Malabar spinach. Took forever to get growing, and now it's just, it just feels like it's accelerating in its growth. So I've got to get some strings in here, hoping to have this kind of jungle green overstory of vine with uh, Bolivian rainbow peppers underneath it. These are some of the absolute favorite hot peppers that I could ever want to eat. I'm so excited to see them again. They start purple and then they turn like a white cream, then a yellow, then an orange, and then a red. And they're tasty all throughout and they dry beautifully. And you can see the rosemary, uh, what? Well, there's rosemary and lavender that I planted just against the northern wall, which will be a permanent element, hopefully overwintering well here and a source of nursery stock for me to take cuttings what's kind of blown my mind, and I don't know that I fully understand it, is how incredibly happy all these plants are. Now, yes, I am watering right now. Um, you can see I've got this high power system. <laughs> That's what it looks like when you are on rainwater. It's a slow flow, so I basically move it to a spot and drop it in. But you can believe me or not, this is the first time I've done this in a month or two. This greenhouse gets so little water, it's kind of ridiculous, and um, we've been insanely hot and dry. Let's see what we've got in here. So I put some insulative bricks and then a digital um, thermometer, and you can see yesterday it got as high as 97 degrees Fahrenheit. Overnight it went down to 70, and the relative humidity has been staying really nice and high. Very pleased with that. It's a perfect combo right now for a day like this. And by being in the bricks, only exposed to the north, I don't think the temperature is influenced by any direct sunlight. Uh, it's gotten over 100 in here many, many times. Not 120, 130, but certainly warm enough. Uh, but yet everything seems to grow incredibly well. I put a huge amount of effort into building the soil in these beds tons and tons of compost and wood chips and logs at the bottom and uh, obviously very deep mulch 
with everything we do here, that's the way it is. And it feels like these plants have gotten their roots down into whatever ambient water is available in the earth below the greenhouse. And for the most part, I mean, the kale hasn't even skipped a beat in weeks. It just keeps looking beautiful and beautiful. It hasn't even bolted. We're in mid-August. We've hit 90 degrees outside a bunch of times, so you can only imagine. And you can see on the far end is our ventilation. I made sure I designed it so that the bottom opens as well as the top. So all summer that's available for air to come in, cool air to replace the hot air. And then I can pack that in with hay in the fall and seal that off. And for summer, there's a block keeping the window open 100%. And we've got a little temperature sensitive wax piston. I uh, think it's about 40 bucks for that. That will open and close the window in the swing season. So to keep it closed when it's going to freeze and open it when it gets above 60 Fahrenheit in here. So semi automated as we get into that time of year where you kind of have to keep an eye on things. Um, let me move this hose once more and then we'll take a quick look outside. Give that bronze fennel some love. That's that nasturtium, definitely. <laughs> I won't draw your attention too long to that. That does not look that great. All of them in here don't look that great. But again, we, you know, we water in here a little bit where things look dry every handful of days, but no real soaker or anything like that. Part of what I think is making this space uh, work this summer is. Early in the spring, I set black locust posts at the four corners and run real taut paracord to connect them all. And we planted tomatoes on the south side as well as the north side. And you can see the tomatoes overall are very happy with that. Really lackluster performance on our part in pinching the internodes and twining them. It just fell off the radar, so they're a mess. Uh, but they are productive. You can see them. But we're looking for blight <laughs> with this scenario. But the whole design idea was, hey, let's grow really rich vining crops up and over the greenhouse for the heat of the season that are frost-sensitive annuals. So as soon as it gets cold, these are zeroed out, and then the full light can come into the greenhouse. So in other words, let's eat our shade cloth. So tomatoes this year, if I had taken the time, we would have had better shade. But even still, I think this helped buffer uh, the temperature swings on the inside. And the beautiful part is this plastic is aggregating a huge amount of excess water. So this is a very fertile place to grow extra crops. And since we're not trying to move the greenhouse, we might as well capture as much as we can out of this. Next year, certainly won't do tomatoes again just to miss any blight issues we could have. Um, I could imagine cucumbers and pole beans, maybe peas in the fall, peas in the spring, um, and really taking advantage of this vertical space and this shade production space that's going on here. But it, this is the very first year of using this, so we're learning, right? We've got to give ourselves patience and time to figure it out. Um, doors and the window's been open all season. We'll start to close that as we get colder. You can see the tomatoes on the north side here as well. But really just wanting to get across the idea. Uh, you know, I watched a few videos on building cattle panel greenhouses. Built this very vaguely based on, more inspired by the ideas, but f building it based on what I had available here. Um, and kind of futzing along and making adjustments as I went. And for year one, for I would say a max of $150. This is a very exciting structure to have on our property and incredibly replicable. I think it took me an afternoon to put this together and then, you know, obviously extra raised beds and posts and all that just kind of evolve off of it over time. Uh, very pleased with the basic idea. We'll do an update in the winter and see how it's performing. Very much crossing our fingers, we get delicious fresh greens throughout most of the winter out of this structure. Tiny little preview for a future video. Just picked up four of these beautiful double-paned, insulated, tempered glass panels. 
44 inches by 80, something like that, uh, 70. And we're going to be building an all-glass greenhouse here. So we'll come back to that. That'll be a maybe $300 project. Big money. <laughs> keep it cheap, keep it simple, and keep it fun. And uh, you can just be making weird experiments all the time and really evolving the place in you, where you live. This was all mowed lawn four years ago. And in exchange for a lawn, we've got massive walls of food coming at us. It's very fun. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to hearing what you're doing with your site, too. Take care.